make up nearly 50% of all gamers, yet only a small percentage of women play esports professionally. It's time to figure out how to change that. The Knights want to empower women to build their esports empire. Along with our partner PNC Bank, we are adamant about creating a more equitable future for gamers. There is no one size fits all solution, so we'll be tackling the issue from all angles, featuring insights from a variety of subject matter experts and professionals. I'm Kat Shields Moon with the Knights. Welcome to the Women in Esports Podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the next episode of the Women in Esports podcast presented by PNC and the Pittsburgh Knights. We're so happy to have you join us, and we're live today, believe it or not, for the first time. I'm super excited to introduce you to two outstanding guests and representatives from PNC to talk about the importance of non-endemic ambassadorship. So even though we're on this journey talking about how People, organizations, partners, and sponsors can be better advocates for women equality in this space. Uh, it's also vitally important for non-endemic companies that are entering the esports scene to also take part in this mission and advance the industry and make it more diverse and inclusive for everyone. Beth Rose, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. Yeah. I'm, um, I'm Beth Marcello. I'm the Director of Women's Business Development at PNC, and I've been at the bank for 15 years. I started this practice that we call Women's Business Development, and the whole idea behind that was really the recognition that more and more often our customers are women, and we want to make sure uh, that we are delivering the financial products and services uh, that they need, uh, in the manner that they uh, that that they want to receive them, so that's that's my day day job, and it's a, I'm pretty lucky to have it. Ah, that's a powerful day job if I ever heard of one. Rose, thanks so much for joining us. Great, thank you. This is going to be awesome. I can't wait. Um, I'm Rose Silva. I've been with PNC for 25 years, and I work as a security director and chief technology officer for PNC's corporate institutional business. I was also the founder of TechConnect, which is a PNC resource group that focuses on improving the meaningful participation of women in technology. So I'm hoping today that I can share some of our journey and see what you know what's applicable to the Pittsburgh Knights where they are in their maturation. Absolutely, you know, because we can all stand to learn something from somebody who, whether it's a person, organization, a book, whatever, that's been there, done that before. So thank you so much, uh, both of you, for coming on the show and lending your expertise. Um, so PNC is a bank, probably seen a couple of ATM machines around for our viewers out there, but it's also much more than just a financial services institution. Could you tell us a little bit more about PNC as a corporate entity? Sure. We really consider ourselves a main street bank. And what that means is that we have a model that allows us to, uh, to support and to give back to customers and communities where all of our employees live and work. We're also uh, very, we pride ourselves on an ex inclusive culture. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that that shows up um, for women, uh, as, as an example, is through our PNC certified women's business advocates. We have about 4,000 employees who voluntarily have um, taken, participated in education and have applied to become certified. So when women bank with us, they have the opportunity to uh, to have a WBA, as we call them, um, be their banker. And it's just an expression of our passion for and commitment to, uh, to women in business. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Yeah, I'd like to add on a little bit in terms of PNC's commitment to diversity and inclusion. Mm -hmm. I, I was with the bank when we first um, activated what we call the employee resource groups. That was, I think, 2005, so a little over 15 years. And I, I want to share that because it's, it's a journey, right? Back then, we had just a couple... Uh, cohorts, I think it was women and African American, and now we have over 11 different um, resource groups with 80 some chapters in 30 markets, and over 13,000 employees are involved on the you know, from an employee engagement perspective. And what it allows an employee to do is to really, um, if you're you know if you are affiliated with the cohort or the, the EBRG that 
um, you can align and, and find support. Or if you're in the business and you want to learn more about that group, uh, it could be a particular ethnicity, gender, women and uh, women, there's women's group, um, or generational group. You know, we've got that available now. And I think um, that really helps folks understand and support each other in terms of all their intersectionality. And then from a business perspective, we've also activated what we call diversity and inclusion councils. They're more of an intersection between the community and the business needs, and they're in all the 34 markets that we serve. So again, just we're here to share best practices. These are things that have evolved over time, and I think really enrich and strengthen the focus on diversity and inclusion in the company. Oh, no, that's wonderful, and it's so so needed, and it's timely you yeah. know, as well. So. I know I stand to learn a lot sitting at this table, <laughs> as will everybody else that's tuning into this podcast. Um, something I did read that was particularly interesting was about a project called Project 257, and I was blown away. I had no idea that something like this existed, but it's so important. Uh, could you tell us a little bit more about that? I'd be excited to tell you about Project 257. So. Uh, PNC just launched Project 257, Accelerating Women's Financial Equality. And the 257 comes from the World Economic Forum's 2020 Global Gender Gap Report that said at the current pace of progress, if we continued at our current pace of progress, and I have a colleague who likes to say perhaps lack of progress, um, it will still take 257 more years for women to catch up to men from an economic perspective. Wow. Right, exactly. That's, that's absurd. Um, we thought it was absurd when we read the study. And so what Project 257 does is allows us to put a sort of exclamation point on our 20 year commitment, 20 year track record of supporting female financial decision makers. And so when we think about Project 257, uh, and according to the report, there are four primary areas where uh, that really contribute to that gender gap. Um, so one of them is pay disparities, so men and women not making the same salaries. Um, one is underrepresentation in the workforce, and particularly in high growth uh, jobs and high growth industry. So one of the reasons why we're here today, because esports is clearly one of those high growth uh, arenas where women need to play a more assertive role. Um, uh, the, uh, the disproportionate share of unpaid domestic work, so think child care or elder care that women shoulder or that holds women back. Um, in the, the workforce. And then finally, uh, probably something that many people have heard about is access to credit, unequal access to credit. And so when it comes to unequal access to credit, I'm also, I really want to uh, give a shout out to uh, a global nonprofit called SheEO that we just partnered with. We did a, a three year uh, 1.257 million, I hope everyone gets that connection, <laughs> um, uh, with SheEO. And SheEO provides interest free loans to women and non binary entrepreneurs. And one of the ways that we're partnering with SheEO is that we've identified 50 uh, women or non binary individuals to be activators with CEO. So one in each of our markets uh, will be working with CEO on a regular basis to um, share with their clients and their network about CEO and how they can be activators, but also working with entrepreneurs in their markets uh, to help them uh, take advantage of the network that CEO offers. That is incredible. That is incredible. <laughs> I just activated. Did you? I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, it's available to all employees. It's available right? to all yeah. employees. And I um, I became enamored with CEO uh, maybe almost a year ago. And I also activated as a way to sort of check out the organization and experience it before I introduced it to PNC. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it became a uh, part of our part of our Project 257 commitment. So check it out, everyone. You yeah. can go to pnc.com slash women, mm -hmm. and we have a lot about Project 257 and about CEO on our website. So you can learn more about it and how you can be involved. And I'm sure there are some women entrepreneurs in the gaming industry oh, that could very well perhaps take advantage of CEO's uh, interest-free loan program. Ah, I love it. I will be checking that out this <laughs> evening. <laughs> <laughs>
No, that's phenomenal. Thank you so much. And Project 257 is such important work, you know, in the partnerships that have come out of it as well. Um, I do want to spend a moment to talk about some of the internal programs that PNC has put into place. And I want to dwell on this because there is a misconception that you have to have these big budgets and these huge partnerships in order to enact change. And that's not necessarily always true. You know, true change starts from inside the organization and some of the, uh, the programs that are put in place, um, different resources for people who need them. Um, I would love to know and learn about some of the internal programming that exists at PNC to support employees and things that people can adopt in their own organizations. Yeah. Yeah. Rose, why don't you take the lead yeah, on that I mean, one? So we touched a little bit on the employee resource groups yeah. and the diversity and inclusion councils, but uh, one of our newer programs, which they've been you know, around for a while, um, in 2018 we launched our Men as Allies program. And, you know, really, um, we believe, you know, from the top of the house to the frontline workers that our, all our employees um, can be allies to each other, in particular, um, you know, women and other underrepresented groups. And so it's, it's a nationally recognized program. We've received awards. And what we do is we, in the, the key parts of the program are to become aware of what a woman's experience is in the workplace, you know, some of the challenges um, and unconscious bias biases she might be facing, and then for the men in there to then help them understand how their gender affects or shapes their thinking, right? And then we kind of kind of close out after looking at all of that with some very specific actions that they can take back into their day, into the teams they lead or that they're members of, and really um, hope to make a difference and, you know, support and mentor and be a true ally to the women in the workplace. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And then we've taken it a step further in tech. Um, we have a women's leadership development uh, program we call We Lead, and we added a module this year um, specific to men in tech. So if there's any, you know, any of those um, micro inequities or unconscious biases that are like specific or unique to tech, we we go in deeper on those items. Mm. So well, I like that. That's that's. That's something that anybody can start. <laughs> so that's, thank you so much for sharing. I would love to talk about esports and how some of the programming that uh, PNC has built could translate into this arena. Uh, Beth, do you have any thoughts to share on that? Well, piggyback on what Rose said, men, men as allies, I think is something that would be a terrific uh, opportunity for esports to uh, to, to, to mimic. Um, you know, one of the things that was most surprising to me whenever I got to know the Knights and when we started talking about this women in esports series was the fact that, um, you know, because everyone's on an equal playing field when it comes to physical prowess, when it comes mm -hmm. to esports, right, to learn that there were uh, that women really weren't on an equal playing field. Um, so given that there are so many men in the industry, just like there are so many men in almost every industry, but certainly financial services as well, um, it's a great opportunity for men to uh, to step up and think about, and for organizations to think about structuring a program uh, where men could be very intentional about how they bring women and how they support women into uh, the industry. What I mentioned earlier are women's business advocates. Well, 30% of our women's business advocates are men. And um, it's not just because they're good guys, it's because they understand that it's, you know, it's important for all of our population, for you know, 50, 50, the other 50% of our population to be uh, contributing at equal an equal pace. Thank you so much, both of you, for sharing. Um, I did want to jump back just for something that you brought up when you were describing Project 257 and just the 257 years that it would take, you know, for women to catch up economically. Um, internally, you know, sticking with uh, different programs that PNC has put in place within the organization, um, how do you address this? What do you do to, to uh, align yourself with the larger mission of Project yeah. 257? So it's a really good question. And, um, you know, as I said earlier, there's four primary reasons for the economic, uh, the economic gender gap. And all four of them are, uh, are things that we believe that we can help address at PNC. So one of them is pay disparities. And, you know, we can address that first and foremost by being 
a role model employer for, for women. And we, you know, we know that we can't be a great bank for women if we're not a great employer for women. So when it comes to pay disparity specifically, we, um, we have begun a biannual pay equity study. Uh, so t twice a year, we look at pay across um, roles, performance, geography, tenure. And what we have concluded is uh, right now, uh, PNC pays women 99% of what we pay men, so we're not perfect. Um, and, and we are striving to be perfect, but it is, as, as Rhodes said earlier, you know, it's, it's a journey that, uh, that we're on. And, um, but, you know, we can't undertake something like Project 257 without making sure that we are being a good um, a role model employer as well. Yeah, no, that, that's amazing, Beth. Thank you. It really does start from within, you know, having enacting change. It's yeah. not something that is outside in. It starts from in and it goes out. Um, so let's talk about just women's equality in general. You know, there's a lot of different missions, organizations or causes that PNC could have uh, picked up and really trailblazed with why women's equality i'm not dissing it i think it's fantastic <laughs> as a woman you know i would just love for everybody to to get a, a glimpse into the thought process and the intentionality that went into choosing women's equality well I, from a tech perspective um you know innovation and entrepreneurship are at the heart of pnc and so, you know, gone is the day that tech is a back room function. You know, it drives everything we do with the shift to digital channels, um, real time payments, you know, um, blockchain technology. You know, PNC is only going to remain competitive and relevant if we invest in tech. And that means then that we have to have diverse representation in our creator and supporter roles for our, our products and services. And, you know, all the studies that have been done point to how diverse teams are more innovative and inclusive in their products and services. And so we're, you know, we're no different than any other um, uh, financial services. We've got competition coming in from big tech, little, you know, fintech, all different sectors. And so we really have made that a priority to make sure that we've got diverse mindset in the, in, the, in what we create. And I think esports is kind of in a, approaching a similar crossroads here as it evolves and matures. If you're, um, you know, a, a competitor in esports or a, a firm that offers services, if you don't bring that diversity to your products and services, you'll become irrelevant. And, and again, we've been around longer as a financial services industry, but this is about sharing lessons and journeys, and and, and it's something we've really had to embrace and make a, a priority for us across the entire um, the entire bank. I would add to that as, as well, that every single organization should be concerned with accelerating women's financial equality because, um, you know, money, you know that saying, money makes the world go round, mm -hmm. right? And when women are making more money, when women's businesses are growing because they have adequate access to capital, that is, allows all of our communities, you know, our cities, our towns, our states, you know, our nation, et cetera, to thrive and prosper. It's in everyone's best interest for women's financial, uh, financial well-being to accelerate. And so I think every, everyone who's listening or watching this today should really pause to think about the impact on their industry, on their business, if women had financial equality. Absolutely. And let, going to esports in particular, I know that I never thought that I would be in esports because I didn't see any women in that mm. space. You know, so I would love to know um, how having women in prominent places, in, in prominent places in with the security and foundation that they really need to, to grow and thrive, um, how does that factor into what you do and lead at PNC? I think that we're really, we're very mindful of that because we believe, you know, if you can see it, you can be it. And so we are proud that right now we have our most diverse um, executive committee and our most diverse board in the company's history. So more than 30% of our board members are women, more than 40% of our executive committee members. So uh, people who report to our CEO 
are women. And, and we have, you know, a full, we have so many um, mm -hmm. programs. It almost sounds trivial to, to, you know, to call them programs, but we have so many avenues where we're intentional about bringing women um, and other minorities as well, but women into the workspace. And personally, I also sit on uh, the advisory board of something we call C and IB Forward. So C and IB is our corporate and institutional bank. And then Forward is an acronym for Women's Advancement, Retention, and Development. And so we're really focused on women who are earlier in, the, in their career, so sort of like their first year out of school through eight years at PNC, making sure that they have a good foundation, that they're building a network within the bank and building a network within the industry and making those connections that will allow them to take advantage of opportunities and move up. Mm -hmm. And then in tech, mm -hmm. there is additional programs and resources to cultivate not only women who come into the bank in tech, but to reach out and bring women into the into the bank in tech. Yeah, we've been um, very intentional with that, yeah. building our pipeline. I mean, today everyone, it's just so competitive, right? And um, what we're finding, there's just not enough women in the pipeline. Uh, when I started in tech uh, many years ago, we won't say exactly how many, but um, the numbers really haven't changed much. They might've gone up, but they've come back down again. And so we've gotten much more engaged with not only the universities and colleges and the tech accelerator programs like Tech Elevator, or we can code it, the coding boot camps. But we've partnered with other organizations like the National Center for Women in Information Technology, who, who really are focused on change agent mobilization. They have a, that particular organization has 1,400 corporate academic and um, government you know, entities. And that they, are focused on you know, raising the meaningful participation of young girls and women um, in computing. And they, they really have opened our eyes to starting much earlier in the process. So we start in the K through 12 range. Uh, we, we, we do um, coding competitions with um, schools that PNC has a relationship with for career building, uh, career uh, skills. And we then take that all the way through college and then as they enter the workforce. So to Beth's point, you really have to be comprehensive and intent, uh, with intention. Uh, otherwise, um, you won't be making a difference and you won't be attracting that talent to your organization. I think in your last podcast, um, you know, is it um, uh, Avarin and, and Dimitri mentioned the need or the importance of having support around the women who enter these um, fields that are dominated by men. And, uh, you know, with NC WIT, they have this aspirations in computing that creates uh, a community around them because so often the social cues and environment in which they're in is not pro-tech for women. And so, they ha and so you have to kind of offset that with uh, letting them know and rewarding them for their interest and keeping that going. Um, and then, you know, I've, I'm a big brother, big sister. That's another program you can do. That's a more at an individual level. Um, but those are really important to invest in and be intentional, um, you know, to kind of build that pipeline and, and keep it thriving. So. No, that's powerful. And gosh, that was, that was such a wealth of great information. I would love to dig in just for a moment. So throughout this podcast, both of you have dropped gems for people <laughs> to pick up on. So Rose, you mentioned intersectionality and how that's a big part. You know, Beth, you were talking about networking and then how both of you um, went and explored CEO for your own before establishing that partnership. And I would like to dial in for a minute just to talk about how can organizations identify the right partners to work with? You know, there's so many different causes and um, places that you could go to, you know, to support. But I think it's very important um, for our viewers to understand what kind of thought process goes into identifying um, the partners that you ultimately choose mm -hmm. to work with? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it really, you know, it's about, it's like finding a marriage partner, right? <laughs> you, I mean, you have to have that right fit. You have to, uh, or you're looking for organizations and programs that um, have the same values mm -hmm. uh, that you do. Um, and it really just sort of, comes down to to that, right? Um, women in esports. So you know we're we're sitting in Pittsburgh today. Pittsburgh happens to be PNC's headquarters, but we're a national bank. We have 
um, and we're growing larger. So, um, you know, there, you're probably, you may have people listening to us all over, all across, around the world. Um, but, uh, you know, Pits, the Pittsburgh Knights are a Pittsburgh organization. We're a Pittsburgh headquartered company. So we had that in common, right? And then when we thought about how are we going to partner with the Knights, you know, the desire for the industry to attract and to attract more women and to uh, grow mm -hmm. through having more women, that, that created a natural fit. And then the perfect fit with Project 257, where we, you know, again, recognizing that there, um, there is underrepresentation in high growth industries and high paying roles. And this is an opportunity. I mean, I'm, I'm astounded. I also teach a class at the University of Pittsburgh, and sometimes um, I'm astounded when my students will pick a client or pick a project, and I've, I've been able to learn a, a bit more about gaming that way. <laughs> and, you know, the, the money that some gamers are making is astonishing to me. And, you know, so that's women can't, we don't want women to be shut out of that. And that means that they need to not only be those professional gamers, but they also need to be behind the scenes, right? Designing, uh, designing games that women and girls want to play and want to get involved in. And then, you know, recognizing that there are so many roles in, uh, in, the, in sports organizations where women can make meaningful, uh, meaningful contributions and get financially rewarded for them. So it was a natural fit, I think, for, for PNC and the, the Knights Women in Esports program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And probably when we're thinking about Tech Elevator or some of right. the organizations that we sponsor on the tech side, it's similar. Yeah, it is similar. Um, like I said, NC Wit was, uh, we, we kind of chose the partnership with them because they were comprehensive. We realized that we needed to go start earlier, right, in the flow. Um, and boot camps like Tech Elevator, we can code it. Um, they're willing to partner with us on diversity. And as a matter of fact, we just turned up some scholarship money in the last uh, couple of years to make sure that their students are um, getting to more diverse populations. It's, you know, uh, and so we're helping with some uh, offsets to the tuition there. And then that, you know, that benefits us because now we are tapping into a part of, of the market that we didn't have an opportunity. So it kind of goes hand in hand. I think the values, aligning values are key is kind of where you need to start. And then you'll have to prioritize the investments and how deep you go with the relationship, um, you know, year to year, because that it is a journey, right? I've, yeah. Like I said, we've been on at least, mm -hmm. you know, well, I say in earnest, at least 15 years. And each year we're doing little, like I said, Men, the Men as Allies is a very recent program. Um, and I mean, in the last three years, so it'll keep evolving. Yeah, no, and I mean, I think that's a perfect title topic takeaway for this episode. <laughs> it is a journey, you know, there's not anybody that has everything figured out, you know, and it, even if there was somebody that gets to that point, things are evolving so rapidly, especially in the tech industry. You know, you almost have to reinvent yourself every day and yeah. keep searching for the right answer, the right path, the right things to do. Yeah. Um, and we are so appreciative tonight, you know, of having a partner like PNC, uh, one that we can learn from and then take what we, we've learned from you and then tie it into esports. The, the entire point of this show is because we really didn't have all the answers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, in bringing on different subject matter experts and different partners and people inside and outside of the industry, it's really helped us broaden our, our perspective and then collect all of those stories, perspectives, and experiences, and inject them back into the esports industry so that we can evolve it, grow it, and make it more accepting of all types of people from all different walks. So thank you both so, so much for joining me today. This is my favorite question to ask. <laughs> if you had one piece of advice to give to a rising woman or non-binary professional that feels feels the struggle, you know, but is still moving regardless. You know, both of you have incredible stories and you're leaders in your industry and you have so much to share. What is, I know that might be a hard ask. What is one thing that you would share? <laughs> Um, Rose, do you want to go first? I do. do I'm thinking to... my usual three. I would okay. say the three I usually <laughs> yeah. list. Um, I'd say the network is really important here for, especially for this, um, 
this industry, uh, again, it was touched on in your prior episode, um, leaning in and finding those support groups. And there could be, there's many flavors that can take. I think I listed about three or four, but I think that's really critical so that you've got sounding board, you've got someone who can coach you, help support you um, and, and your journey and your goals. So that, that's what I would recommend. And I would just piggyback. So first of all, I would say keep going, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going because you know, everyone and every woman I think has found, had, you know, times in her career where it felt sort of impossible, especially again, in male dominated environments. But um, just, you know, programs like this, mm -hmm. they, there, today there are so many more resources that women have than whenever I was starting my career. And I find that there's always someone who's willing to, you know, support a younger person coming up. So, you know, just look for that network, look for those uh, mentors, and it doesn't have to be a professional mentoring relationship. Just, you know, find those groups where you fit in and that you you know, some have that shoulder to cry on if that's what you need or uh, that you have that person who says, yes, you can do that. Take that promotion. Absolutely, you can do that. And just, you know, find your fan club and yeah. uh, and hold on to it. Oh, I love that. That's, that's perfect advice. Thank you both so much. Um, there you have it. Um, spend about 45 minutes with two incredible women who have shaped multiple programs at PNC and are helping us the Knights, you know, uh, find our way and hopefully a lot of other organizations and viewers who are tuning into this podcast. We, we hope that you take this knowledge, these gems that are being dropped and find a way to include them in your own programming and your own organizations to advance the overall industry. Because as Rose said, it's a journey and we're all in it together. Thank you both so, so much. Thank you. Thank you for having Appreciate us. Appreciate it. I did want to spend some time uh, with any non-endemic companies that did tune into this show. And wherever you are in your journey in terms of trying to identify opportunities or partnerships in which you can jump in and make change, esports is a perfect opportunity, you know, for multiple reasons. Um, so don't be afraid of gaming culture or a lack of understanding about esports or tournament brackets or you know what payouts or all of that don't worry about that the most important thing is to realize that there's immense opportunity in this industry so if tournaments aren't your thing partner with schools run coding camps donate equipment there's a million different ways that you can get involved to advance the industry overall but open the door for others who may not have the same opportunities. If the kind of games, you know, so first person shooters aren't your thing, there's a ton of different games out there from Rocket League to FIFA to Knockout City. You know, there's a lot of different competitive titles that fit different age ranges, interest levels, and content types. You know, so don't let that deter you either. What, if you're wondering if those crazy gamers are going to be a bad brand association for you, you know, we've all seen some of the headlines. Um, that is definitely an anomaly. You know, there's so many gamers out there. There's so many people passionate in this space. You know, it, you'd be hard pressed not to find somebody who aligns with your corporate values and who you can really get behind and champion. And I encourage you to look outside of those that you would normally consider you see in the bright lights because there's so much talent out there. But I'll get off my soapbox now. <laughs> Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode, and we can't wait to see you for the next episode of the Women in Esports podcast presented by PNC and the Pittsburgh Knights. Catch you next time. <laughs>